I'm just here to tell you that you don't have to do everything the same as everyone else. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda and you're watching Small Entertainment. And this is really just kind of a small little video. I just wanted to talk about this topic because I recently hit 300,000 subscribers here on YouTube. Silent party. I wanted to talk about uh, niching down and my argument for the most part for not niching down and why I haven't really niched down and some of the pros and cons of it. Because when I was trying to grow my YouTube channel when I was much smaller and starting out, and even now I still watch these videos of how to get your first thousand subscribers. I still watch those because I find that they're a good way to see how the algorithm is changing. And uh, people who make those types of videos are usually on top of trends that they're seeing. But one of the things that I saw a lot when I had 400 subscribers, when I had 6,000 subscribers, and even now when I have 299 to 300K subscribers, one of the recommendations I see across YouTube TikTok, Instagram is pick a niche and stick with it. But first, let me take a little bit to tell you about our sponsor for today's video, Harry's. Harry's makes amazing razors that actually have premium blades that they make in their own factory in Germany that give a close, comfortable shave. They have a new razor with a two-tone handle design. I got the color combination Sage. The handle now has deeper grooves to help improve grip, and it's made with 50% recycled plastic. Personally, I prefer to buy men's razors because there's no pink tax, and Harry's is no different. With Harry's, you get a premium quality shave at affordable prices. Their foaming shave gel is is made with aloe and is great for sensitive skin. In your starter kit, you'll get a five blade razor, a weighted handle, a blade cover, and foaming shave gel. You can receive your starter set for just $3 when you go to harrys.com slash swell entertainment. Thank you again to Harry's for sponsoring this video. The more specific niche you get or the less saturated niche you pick, the better. I do think to some degree that that is a good idea. Um, I do think that if that's what you want for speed wise for growth, that niching down is probably the way to go. I didn't niche down at the start for a variety of reasons. And I started my YouTube channel. Um, I kind of had a niche, I would say. It was mostly horror movies. When I first really got into doing YouTube when I was in high school, I started doing Netflix horror reviews where I would review horror movies. Um, and I would talk about like kill counts, what I would rate them, based on stab marks and all of that. Hey Popcorns, Amanda here with Swell Entertainment, and this is a Netflix horror review. For a little bit, I tried to make my very few view viewers, my very few viewer numbers, I tried to call you guys uh, Popcorns, because I thought that was cute and movie related. I'm gonna start calling you guys Popcorns, because I love popcorn, and I love my subscribers. So yeah, you guys are Popcorns now. Maybe I should bring that back. Do you guys want to buy popcorns? Small Entertainment's popcorns? And uh, obviously that didn't go very far. Uh, movies were oversaturated now, let alone then. Then I did uh, a few videos on Five Seconds of Summer. Rolling Stones did a cover and an article on Five Seconds of Summer. Really hope you can see this. Okay. Anyway, I love this cover. And so that was all I did for a little bit for the most part. Um, and then I took a two year hiatus and I came back in 2018. Hi, spoiler alert. Uh, nothing happens in this vlog. I came back for a variety of reasons. Mainly I was deeply unhappy. Uh, check out my video on how I got 100K subscribers if you wanna see me break down all of my reasons and all of that. But when I came back, I decided there was a variety of things that I wanted to do. Uh, and one of those things included uh, the I Tried to See Don't Have To series. And the premise of that was me doing full length reviews for uh, sponsored products that I felt like were just kind of egregiously not being used by the creators that were promoting them. You can say that you use sugar bear hair to get healthy hair all you want. I just don't think it's helping you get the perfect blowout. It's day 21. I'm getting ready for work. So I have no makeup on right now. On camera, it doesn't look that bad. In person, it looks quite bad. Same with flat tummy tea and the like. One of those things that I decided to go to was TanaCon. And when I went to TanaCon, I really was not expecting it to be a complete shit show until the night before. And very quickly, I moved away from just doing product reviews and still sprinkling in movie reviews here and there. But I also did, you know, I started doing event reviews and things like that. And uh, trying to do experience reviews. There's a few vlogs in there that just didn't work out. Happy 4th of July. Okay, it's like Captain America's birthday, but okay. I really was just kind of throwing a bunch of things at my channel and seeing what stuck, and that's why I didn't like pick a niche right away. If I do have any niche whatsoever or any clear through line throughout my content, um, it's me. It's me sitting here talking to you through a camera. 
And that became really apparent to me that that's what my strength was from TanaCon because my vlog of TanaCon, though it got more views, it only gained me about a thousand subscribers in total across my channel, which isn't bad, but it wasn't until I did my follow-up video, my legitimate, I tried going to TanaCon so you don't have to video, where I was sitting on my bed talking to a camera in my rainbow shirt that I gained about 4,000 subscribers or something, uh, putting me at about 5,000. So I kind of realized like, okay, people like me, they like how I talk. Yeah, they like seeing clips from the events and things like that, but they like the way I explain things. And that seemed to be the overall consensus in the comment sections. That and why would you give this girl money in the first place? But you know, you can't please everyone. So for about two more years, for the rest of 2018 and the entirety of 2019, I was very inconsistent. Uh, in both the type of content I was making and also frequency. I think at most I ever made two videos a month, maybe. But even though my videos weren't consistent, even in niche or timing, I was consistently putting out videos that I liked, that I was happy with. I think that was also important. And again, there was a variety of things in there, but also the through line was again, me at my desk or on my bed talking to a camera about a topic or a trend or a person or a thing, whatever. I have had people comment like, oh, I didn't even realize this video was from two years ago until I checked the comments and saw the, the dates or whatever. I don't know if that's a compliment on like my consistency or if that's an insult to my consistency because I literally use the same camera that I've been using since I was 18. And though I now work with an editor, William and I worked for a while to make sure that like my style of editing stayed pretty consistent despite him now taking over the bulk original edits. But my point with bringing that note up is that the care and the time that I put into content hasn't really changed. Even before I was making money from YouTube, 2018, 2019, I was lucky to get a payout once every three or four months. Yeah, I started getting views around TanaCon, but I wasn't talking about TanaCon for everything. Some people liked me and I got an audience from that, but for the most part, they were clicking because of the event, not because of me. Um, some of them subscribed because of me, but that's a different thing. So then going into 2020, again, pretty middling views, not bad, but you know, not income, nothing to sustain. I was still working as a barista at the time of all of this. I started working as a barista in, God, 2019 or no, 2018, when did I move? If you look at some of my backgrounds and my videos, you can track how many times I've moved in the last few years. I think I was coming up on a year and a half, two years when I left uh, my coffee shop that I was working at. But I was working as a barista. Prior to that, I was working in retail at a baby and kids clothes store. That's where I was working when TanaCon was happening. Everyone always asks like, how did you afford uh, YouTube when you weren't making money from YouTube? And I've joked that it was my expensive hobby, but also I had a part-time job while I was in school and then it became a full-time job once I finished school in 2019 uh, and took my gap year, then ended up becoming a full-on school hiatus that I am still in. I was very lucky in that my dad and I had a deal that as long as I had a job and got a degree, I could live at home rent-free. And so that was part of the way that I was able to afford to buy products, go to events, things like that. Despite making minimum wage here in California, that's how I was able to afford to do that. And even sometimes I couldn't afford it. 2020, I decided that I was going to try and give the YouTube thing a real shot and do weekly videos. So one of my inconsistencies was yoinked um, and I became a weekly YouTuber while also working full-time at the coffee shop. And fun fact, I January of 2020, New Year's Eve, I literally had friends tell me that I should stop doing YouTube. I literally had people tell me, you know, I think you should move on, start doing Etsy again and going back to that because this is, this is obviously not working out for you. You should just stop. And it was kind of implied that my content was cringe. I didn't listen, so I started doing weekly videos. And sometimes I would do, gosh, there was a point in 2020, I think as well, where I did three videos in one week because there was updates crazy and I was editing everything. And I was like, oh God, here we go. And I was just really throwing myself into it. And then at the end of February, I had a video get picked up in the algorithm. And I think the thing as well that people don't know is that that video actually had underperformed when I first put it out, even by my channel's original standards. I had put out two videos after that when the video got picked up in the algorithm. So it wasn't even like my most recent upload and then immediately it went viral. I was like, okay, I guess I'm, I'm moving on. I put all this work into this video and I'm moving forward. The thing as well is about that is I had had videos get picked up before. Um, I had a couple of commentary videos also do well. 
and they just never lasted. So I truly thought that this was going to be one of those times when the video got picked up and started getting views. At the time I was in uh, UFO Con in, in San Francisco alone and I called my dad hyperventilating because I think the video in the span of like five hours got to like 300,000 views. It was doing crazy numbers really quickly. And suddenly I went from 6,000 subscribers to 10,000 to 30,000 in the span of about a day or two. My point here with bringing all that up is that at that time, whether I was posting consistently or not, I had a body of content that though it was not all event reviews and not all experience reviews, it was content that I was a part of and content that I was proud of. When that video got picked up and other videos started getting picked up as well, even though they weren't the same topic or the same genre of content, the same event review essentially, they were getting views and people were liking them and liking me. And um, <laughs> it still feels weird. My chest feels tight and I don't like that. Go away. That's, we're doing, we're, we're just talking. Everything's fine. Hermes is sleeping. We're doing great. Why does my chest feel tight? I hate this. <laughs> this is weird. I got past this. But I realized when that video was getting views and I was getting subscribers and all these comments, I started getting comments that were like, your next video has better be insane. Your next video has to be amazing because you have all these eyes on you. It's quite literally what people were telling me. One, that's not a fun feeling at all. I've mentioned this before, but like wanting to have that viral moment, wanting to be a creator, wanting to have eyes on you, and then actually having that are two very different things. And I adapted over time, but fuck, did I want to walk into traffic for a little bit there. I was like, this is a lot. I don't like it, you know? <laughs> and I, I've gotten better at accepting it and all of that. Still, I jump six feet when people recognize me in public, but still. Expectations rarely live up to reality. Um, and it's just the fact of life with everything, but also with, you know, internet views, you know? Stardom sounds weird. That doesn't feel like it applies. At this time, it was like a week before the end of February, basically. So with those comments that I was getting about the next video being big, I figured, okay, I'm currently at a UFO convention. I know this video is not gonna be ready till another week from now. And I have two other videos ready to go. I'm gonna stick with the videos that I'm making. And I'm not gonna try and crank out an event or video, video to capitalize on the video that's also essentially an event review. I recorded a video about the uh, the Ray drops, I believe they were called. Filming in a hotel room is honestly really annoying. I don't know how porn producers do this all the time. And they were like an appetite suppressant for metabolism boosting that TikTok was promoting that I was like, this is dangerous, please don't take this. I put a video out about that, cranked that out. There was a couple of little things like that. And then sure enough, I get back and I was back for, I think, three days from San Francisco when San Francisco announced they were declaring a state of emergency because of COVID. And shortly after lockdown happened. So if I had decided to do event reviews as my niche because of that video going viral, obviously nothing would have worked out because everything was immediately canceled. I had my UFO convention video, which I didn't end up putting out. Here it is. At first I was tempted to say that this was the VidCon of ufology, but then I found out there was another event called Contacts in the Desert and that's like UFOCon times 20. So wouldn't have been an accurate comparison. Obviously that wouldn't have worked. If I had decided right then and there to niche down immediately, that wouldn't have worked out. I had no way of knowing what COVID was gonna do at the time. I knew that I was hearing coughing at that event I was at, and I knew that that stressed me the fuck out. And I knew that I was very scared about getting on the plane and coming back. That's what I knew. I think the choice that I made to kind of keep my head down and just keep doing what I was doing, I think was the right choice for my sanity at the time. I think that would have been the downfall of my sanity entirely if I had just continued trying to replicate that initial viral moment. The next two months, I just kind of kept doing different videos, a few movie reviews in there. I did some product reviews. I did some commentary videos, a lot of that. Obviously we're in a pandemic. I realized I had a bunch of YouTubers following me that I liked, so I was like, okay, let's send them all pandemic pickup lines, you know? That video didn't do well, but it was fun to do. It was one of those things where even when I was struggling and I started drifting towards burnout from working full time, as a barista, because hours started getting better even though we were still in lockdown and then also doing full-time content creation. And I was drifting towards burnout because I just was not sleeping and I wasn't eating while well. my appetite was all messed up. And also people were really mean during the pandemic in Orange County. Y'all were awful. If anyone who was in that coffee shop at that time, any, any customers see this, you guys were dicks. <laughs> a lot of you were very nice, but oh my God, some of you were crazy. Someone went on a two week tirade 
trying to get me fired because I asked him and his wife to pull their masks up. If we all got COVID, you couldn't get your coffee. I'm just saying. I was not doing well emotionally, mentally, physically, but I think that creatively I was still doing well because I was able to kind of pick and choose what type of the videos I wanted to do. And I wasn't just doing product reviews or I wasn't just doing commentary or I wasn't just doing the event reviews that I wouldn't have been able to do because no events were happening. You know, some events started happening online, but still, I really think that not niching down really helps me creatively in a really difficult time for a lot of people. And even when I did end up leaving my job in August of 2020, terrified of not making enough money and not being able to pay my bills and all this stuff, I knew that as long as this lasted, I had to jump at it now. And I knew that I liked talking about different things and doing different things and all of that. And obviously that's carried on since. Could I have niched down at the start? Yes, not for event reviews, but there were other videos that were doing well that I definitely could have picked one and niched down. And I do think that I would have grown more consistently. Though I've had growth, I haven't like dropped off followers or anything like that. I definitely probably could have grown sooner and faster if I had picked a niche like product reviews or uh, just doing commentary or just doing media reviews. And I probably could have grown faster, but I also don't think I would have been happy with that growth or I wouldn't be happy with the job that I now have, which is high. <laughs> I do think as well that, you know, even when things are, when I'm struggling to come up with video ideas because I do do videos once a week at least, and then I try to do two a week, if I was stuck doing one thing, I don't think I would be able to do weekly videos anymore. Cause I think over time I would start getting burnt out trying to fit into whatever mold I had decided that's what I needed to do to grow. Yes, the growth has not been like astronomical if I just niche down. I think that the growth has kind of meant more, if that makes sense. Because I do think that because of the way that I've been able to do videos and talk about a variety of different topics without niching down, that I have been able to gain an audience that mostly likes me. I could be wrong, tell me if I'm wrong. The statistic that I've heard that I've mentioned a couple of times on this channel, and I have no idea if this is still the case, TikTok's probably changed it because I do think TikTok's changed things uh, across all social media platforms. Um, the statistic I once heard is that it takes an average of someone watching seven videos of yours on YouTube before they hit subscribe. Now, even then in February of 2020, if you watch seven of my videos, even though I hadn't, even, I don't even know if I've, I'd put out seven videos that year, I think that you get a pretty good sense of who I am. And even now, regardless of the topic, I think you get a pretty good sense of who I am, or at least how I do videos and how I talk and all of that. And so I think in doing that, instead of just people being like, oh, she talks about X and I like X, so I'm gonna follow her because she's talking about X. People follow because oh, she talks about stuff. I don't know what she's talking about, but I like how she's talking about it. She's making me interested in this thing, or she's telling me about this thing that I never would have heard about, or you know, she's getting really amped up over this really stupid topic, but you know what? Her nose is cute. I don't know, what, what do you guys follow me for? <laughs> I just think all in all, I've been able to gain an audience that you know you guys like me, and that's why I'm able to continue to talk about really whatever I want on this channel. At the very least, you guys know it's gonna be me talking about it. I know that's not gonna work for any everyone, and at the end of the day, uh, it is, I don't know if vulnerable is the word, but I can't think of anything else. When you see me here, it's it's me uh, for the most part. Um, yeah, you see an edited version. You see a version where I, I've been told by people that uh, who know me in real life that watch my videos, like, you know, you have a video voice where your voice kind of goes down an octave and you kind of talk like this. No idea how much of that is like because I'm talking to a camera and not an actual human being or I'm just ranting or rambling. I have no idea. Talk like myself, I think. Uh, my opinions, my thoughts, my feelings for the most part. I try to disclose my biases when I have them and I just kind of talk to you guys. I don't have notes. My phone is off. My notebook's closed, my computer, uh, I changed my screensaver. Instead of saying Amanda's laptop, it says, you should be working <laughs> <laughs> on that grind. I don't have notes or bullet points or a script to talk to you guys with, I'm just talking. There is an element of that that I do think is uh, dangerous because 
Obviously, I have say over final edit, but like you never know what's coming out of your mouth sometimes. I talk fast and my brain works sometimes. Nothing bad usually, but like there are sometimes I say things confidently that are just blatantly incorrect. <laughs> Try to make edits and corrections where I can there, but still. But you know, when I come on here and I talk about things and I talk about my feelings on things, and you guys have seen me get emotional about topics and things like that. Hell, I was tight in the chest earlier. There is a vulnerability to that. And so I don't recommend that for everybody. I do think that I don't have a persona for the most part on here because I do think that that, as well as niching down or even in collaboration with niching down, would make me go insane. Um, I like having the ability to talk about what I want when I feel like it, how I want. That's not gonna work for everybody. Obviously, I don't really do the whole YouTube voice thing and I don't do this and I don't have the same photo and everything thing and all, that and all of that and that's fine. There are plenty of people who do and that's great, but that's just not something that I think is sustainable for me because then the moment that I hit the record button and I stop recording and I have to drop that smile and I have to go back to doing whatever the fuck else I was gonna do, slowly over time that would kill me. I truly think that. And so some people can do that. Some people can do that. And then I, I'm just not that person. This is so all over the place. My point is, is niching down. <laughs> I'm doing great. <laughs> There's the other problem with not having a set niche or a set uh, script is you just kind of go, hopefully you get something cohesive in the edit. I think over time, because I'm not gonna stop not niching down. Just finished filming a movie review before I filmed this. A video today is talking about an industry plant potentially on TikTok, you know, and I, I like being able to talk about whatever I decide is interesting to me that week. I love that. I like all of the uh, event experiences that I've started being able to go to again. I will say a downside of not niching down. Um, and this is a downside that I see in general uh, with my content is I sometimes have videos that I don't expect to do well, do incredibly well, uh, that I'm like, this is gonna be a nine of 10. Side note, I hate the ranking system, but it is sometimes useful. Prizes me and it's a two of 10. Um, and that I have videos where they are quite literally just for me. Like I'm just having fun. Like my squiggles videos, becoming the, the magic rainbow squiggles lady, three or four of 10, you know? Like there's videos that do well that I don't expect to do well. And there are videos that I'm like, this is gonna be great. And then it ends up getting, it's a 10 of 10, you know? And that's just the reality of it all. Because sometimes people are expecting one video and then also with the notifications and systems here on YouTube, which I do think are not the best, but I can understand why they're not perfect. There are people who follow me because they like this one type of video that I make. And though they like me, they like that one type of video. They only like my movie reviews or my product reviews or like. And so then if that video is not that, then they're probably not gonna watch that video. Or maybe they will watch that video because that's the type of video they like, but because of the way that YouTube works, they're not getting notified of that video. There is a double-edged sword because again, you are gonna get people who are like, I watched this one video, that's the one video I like. I only care about the videos in this playlist, only show me those videos, <laughs> you know? So like with anything, there's give and take. I guess all in all, this video is kind of me giving you permission um, that you don't have to niche down to some microscopic uh, version of content and then try to constantly freak out trying to fit that content genre. I'm seeing this a lot on TikTok as well. And again, if you all you care about is growth, if that's all you care about, then sure, niching down is the way to do it. However, building a community and building an audience that doesn't just like your content and also likes you, I think that not niching down is a great way to go about that. And it's a great way to keep uh, creative and keep yourself from just seeing this as just a uh, like a thing that you have to do every day. This is a job and I see this as a job, but it was my expensive hobby first. And if I didn't have fun doing this, I wouldn't still be doing it. The money doesn't hurt. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said that the money, I, I'm financially, not just stable, but financially independent for the first time in my life. There was a point in my life where I was going to the consignment store three days in a row, just because I was, I, I had to pay a phone bill and all my other bills had lined up in that same week. Now it's like I can, comfortably afford to fill my fridge, buy products for videos and feed Hermes the nice snacks. <laughs> He's sleeping like a log right now. And be able to go on trips for videos and things like that. And that's incredible. But also if I wasn't having a good time, I would not still be doing this. There's much less stressful jobs. <laughs> it would probably be less fun, but you know, they'd have more consistent income and all of that. And that's so not what I'm talking about here, but still, I just wanted to Make a little note. And again, this is a weird video, but you know, thank you for 300K. Um, and wow, this is so, 
This is a very weird, inconsistent video. Like I said, it was meant to be short. Still, I went on some tangents. The thing about YouTube and TikTok and everything in general is that you kind of see what everyone else is working with as far as brand deals and audiences and meet and greets and merch and opportunities and, and uh, events and collaborations and all of that. And you see that as like the point you need to get to. A lot of people I think forget or just kind of think that you know, the fact that this is your brand, your job, your uh, content is kind of secondary and they're just trying to get to that point. And so I just think that having fun with this, this is such a fun job. This is great, but it is a job, you know? And I just think the way you, there's different ways that you can try and, you know, build an audience and make it so that you're not going insane. And for me, not niching down is one of those things. And I'm just talking in circles now. So I'm going to wrap this up, but I just, I really just wanted to kind of make a, a very awkward, shitty argument for, <laughs> I, I did this very poorly, for not niching down. Anyways, that's really gonna be it. Thank you again so much for 300,000 subscribers. I plan on doing a giveaway or something soon for that. I'm just kind of figuring all of that out because I really wanna do something to kind of give back to you guys. Um, and that's something that I've been wanting to do for a while is a little giveaway. So I think that'll be fun. Do you make content? Have you ever niched down? Um, do you think that I'm stupid for not niching down? Let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, The Swell Shenanigans Podcast. Reminder, I have merch like that mug back there. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also like to support my Patreon, let me listen down below. If you like to let me know on social media, I'll be up here and that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. All in all though, this is a pretty cool job. <laughs> Thank you, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Crash PC, China, David, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Era, Ayal, Hopeless, Incognito, Jack Ray, James, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Kristen Lamb, Lexis, Louise, Matt, Matt O, Matthew S, Meme Lord, Michael, Michael J, Micah, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat Penn, Richard, Rob, Red, Robert Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Cutie, Randy, Wendy, William, Zendry, Zwink.